So as an example of matrix methods, we're going to talk about optical cloaks. So the way they work, oh, I'm sorry, let me take this off. So this is a magic cloak, but we're going to actually talk about physical cloaks. So theorists have figured out a way mathematically to warp space around an object so that the electromagnetic waves travel around the object and keep going as though the object weren't there. That's a cloak. The problem is to do this requires exotic materials with properties that don't exist in nature. Things like a negative index for refraction and a speed of light or a phase velocity that's infinite, things like that. So those properties don't exist in nature, but we can make something called metamaterials. So a metamaterial is when you take real materials and you sort of sculpt them at a microscopic scale so that they behave as though they have those properties under certain conditions. So this has been done and cloaks have been made um, at microwave frequencies and even a little bit at visible, visible and near infrared frequencies. But of course the cloaks are limited. Um, they might be limited in the volume they can block. If these metamaterials are hard to make, maybe you can only make small ones. They might be limited to only viewing at certain angles. They might be limited to only working at certain wavelengths. Lots of limitations, but they're making progress. I'm going to show you another way to do cloaks with the geometrical optics we've been talking about and how we can analyze them with matrices. So imagine two lenses with the same focal length, f, and we're going to separate them by 2f. So if light comes in to this lens, it will focus to the middle at f, and then it will spread back out, hit that lens, and come out straight. So if you put your eye right there and look into these lenses, you'll see the same rays you would see if the lenses weren't there, because the rays would look the same if they went straight or if they did this. So in some sense, this is a cloak, because you can now put an object here, and it won't have any effect. All the rays hitting the lens go down and meet here and come back out. They'll miss the object, and you won't see it, as long as it stays in here. So your cloaking volume is sort of this part inside the cylinder between the two lenses, but not inside the cone where the light goes. So this is a cloak. It's not a great cloak because it only works for light on axis. So if you were to look on axis, this might look okay, but if you were to look to the side, everything would be warped and, uh, and, and distorted. So you wouldn't really see the natural background if you were to just walk by this lens. So some researchers at Rochester, uh, which is a very well-known university for optics, decided to look into ways to uh, figure out how you could do this with larger sets of lenses and how you could design a cloak. So again, we want a region where the light that goes in will behave as though it just goes straight through. So if this cloaking region has some length L, we want it to go in, and you might start to think of it in terms of what we've been doing in paraxial optics. Each one of these rays might have a height and an angle. So all we got to do is say we want it to go like this. If it went in there, we want it to come out there. If it went in there, we want it to come out here. So what you can see is we need this thing to, uh, we need the optical system to behave like the propagation matrix. And the propagation matrix, if we want the ray to move a distance L and keep its original path, that's just 1, L, 0, 1. So the question is, what lenses do you put in here to make the product of all their matrices be 1, L, 0, 1? We'll find this doesn't actually work. Okay? So this works on axis, but it doesn't work for all these rays going slightly off axis within the paraxial limit. So this is how we can use our matrices to figure this out.